All right, guys, just to give you a little update, uh, today is April the 15th of 2017. I got to report myself to Ukrainian police to request political, for political, to submit requests for political asylum. It is right now 6.19 a.m. in the morning. Well, two days ago, on April the 13th, I attempted to file political asylum with Belarus, Belarusian, uh, Belarus authorities. Uh, but did not made it. I did not made it practically on foot. I did not made it on foot because they have the Polish authorities on, of course, on behalf of the European Union. You know, it's this, I wouldn't say only Marxist European Union, but I rather would say corruption. You know, it's corruption on behalf of Zionist United States of America that I was declined this request to even have the right to speak to Belarus authorities. Okay, they would not allow me even to speak even on the telephone with the Belarus authorities at I would say the main, I would say number one crossing between uh, Belarus and Poland, which is totally outrageous. Okay, I did not go anywhere, uh, I don't know, with a plane or anything like this, but I literally came on foot right on board a crossing, as you are about to see, and was declined the right to approach to Belarus um, checkpoints, uh, guard check, if you like. Polish authorities would not allow me to come anywhere even close. Uh, incredible situation. Um, bunch of cars would pile up over there that's crossing. I was also told that by Polish authorities that nobody ever goes through that crossing because one is made for the cars only, cars only. Okay, I don't know how that could possibly be between Minsk and Warsaw. Now you're talking about two major capitals, huge capitals, big countries, that nobody ever attempts to cross the border over there on foot. But this is what Polish authorities have told me, to turn around and go back. It didn't matter when I told them about uh, atrocities that were done to me, atrocities that you already have read about on my new site, I was just told to turn around and go, and if I would continue to insist, I would be arrested. So, was left with no choice but turn around and just go. Uh, keep in mind this, on April the 13th, when I attempted to cross the border, I was already about four days without sleep that I went. I think it was like four days. Uh, fascinating. There's a little um, motel. Yeah, a motel right next to that guard point, uh, border crossing. And as I entered to that place, uh, what I was received was with three young kids, uh, employee, and two other kids. I don't know who they were with the huge amount of laugh they were laughing like crazy you know like i don't know uh asked if i can only leave my luggage there to go back to uh border crossing and record the whole situation uh and it was very funny uh very very funny uh not even practically not even allowed to do that so I packed my stuff and I was out of there. Uh, let me tell you uh, the feeling that I got and that border crossing, you know, this, this European Union, this corruption, because this is worse than, you know, people, people say European Union is Marxist, you know, European Union is more than Marxist. It's a corruption. It's a corruption that is, it's led by the corrupt politics, polit politics, uh, corrupt politicians who act on behalf of the United States of America. So 
We cannot talk only about the Marxism. You know, in the Marxism, something like this would not happen. Okay, you would get treated in certain way because of your political views, uh, but corruption. I don't know how much really was present in, during the Soviet Union. Yeah, you could corrupt politic, politicians, uh, policemen, and so on, but. Uh, this here, this is a totally, I think, still different situation. When I got to that border crossing, I mean, on one side I saw Belarus. Uh, I was on the European Union side, believe me, I felt like grabbing that backpack, just throwing one right over the fence and just jump over and just run to Belarus. Seriously. And look, this used to be part of the Soviet Union before... Uh, We are in so-called European Union. This is this is very very confusing. Uh, this whole thing is, is just is just incredible. I mean, uh, not allowed to board the plane from Moscow, uh, bound to stay in Warsaw, uh, not allowed to come on foot to Belarus uh, to claim that basic right, that basic right to claim political asylum. I mean, European Union, this really, really is a prison. You could say Marxist prison policed by corrupt pro-Zionist politicians, people that are willing to sell, do just about anything on behalf of United States of America. It is incredible, folks. This thing is incredible. Um, is there anything else I would mention in respect to this? Well, today uh, the stuff that I'm reporting to you about is the most horrific stuff I have encountered in my life. Uh, I am standing right now at what is Terrace Paul border crossing um, border crossing Polish Belarusian border crossing and yeah you can see right here you can see uh, what exactly is taking place border on the other side you have Belarus and right here you have guarding uh, this section here is guarded it's a fence, as you see, and this section here, the entry to Belarus, uh, the first place before you enter Belarus is guarded by Polish authorities, by Polish immigration, police, and so on. You can see a long line of cars here lined up, all trying to enter Belarus. Uh, and if we go back to that incident that I have talked about, the most horrific, the most terrible thing that I have encountered, actually, it really is. Uh, I came here to apply for political asylum with Belarusian authorities, and I tell you what, what you see here is a shack, guard shack from European Union member state, Poland who would not simply not even allow me to go in there and apply for that political asylum even after they were explained that I am in danger, death threats, deadly situation, that anything can happen to me at just about any time, uh, that I am financially completely exhausted and cannot even afford myself to apply for what would be visa entry procedure that requires you probably about hundred dollars or more costs lodging food and so on before you get one it takes a lot of time uh, simply completely unaffordable unrealistic work explained psychiatric torture against me joblessness situation <laughs> more than 30,000 jobs decline on two continents in more than six countries 11, 13 years of forced unemployment, uh, nothing, and I mean absolutely nothing, 
whatever the stuff I have just talked to you about, nothing changes the mind of these people. They are determined to simply block individual from entering uh, to Belarusian authority from individual walking toward Belarusian uh, booth where you can apply for political asylum. They do not allow you to even approach Belarusian authorities, which is truly unprecedented violation of the human rights. I have not seen anything like this just yet. Simply have complied with the laws, came here to apply for political asylum as the case is in any other country in the world, and Polish authorities, therefore European Union member state authorities would not allow me you know they fear so much of the stuff they have done to me would not even allow me to file for that political asylum procedure with Belarusian authorities and it's completely the same situation with the Russian authorities um, who require also visa entry to Russia uh, again, that's going to cost you a lot of money if you're going to do this. It's not going to cost me anything because I'm broke. I don't, I, I don't, I'm now really down <coughs> on nothing. If I'm ever even going to make it to, uh, if I'm ever going to even make it to Warsaw, I told them that uh, just about anything can happen to me. I told them about attempted hijacking and things by Israelis. These people don't give a shit about anything. They don't care, okay? All they say is that this is just a border crossing for cars, for the vehicles, and you, as a person, you as an uh, individual, uh, you basically you don't have the right to apply for that uh, political procedure in any way, okay? So this is by far the most disgusting thing I have seen yet. And this is what the European Union does. You may want to call this Marxism, you may want to call this whatever the hell you want, but not even the Marxism was as corrupt and criminal as what the case is with the European Union. This goes beyond Marxism, this goes be beyond anything. It's a mafia, it's a criminality beyond anything reasonable one can possibly imagine. So you already know about the situation in Hungary, what happened, my car was stolen when I attempted to apply for political asylum against Slovenia, uh, European Union member state, Hungarian fellow European Union member state, uh, no job, uh, basically jobless right now for two months, applying for nothing, it's a joke. It's a joke, it's a sadistic, sick joke by the most sadistic people possibly can imagine. And I am about now to walk back to where the... Um, Paul and then I will see what, what am I gonna do if I'm not gonna be even hijacked before I reach that point. I really do not know anymore uh, what possibly could go worse than what the situation really is. This is what we are dealing with. This is what we have now in the European Union. Uh, I don't know what to say. I don't. I really do not know what uh, what to report about this anymore. I mean. It's really, really hard. I don't, I don't know where to go, what to do. Financially, totally down. Without dime, basically. Have no clue what, what to do tonight. And it's interesting that uh, when you go into this, uh, you know, when you seek assistance and this and that, uh, these people, they would just leave you with enough money so you would go to the hostels, the shit places that they used to torment people, you would not be allowed to eat decent food or stay at a decent place. Okay, let me give you a fast idea about what's going on, okay? Uh, this happened just yesterday and it was in Warsaw, okay? Uh, I didn't know exactly what to do and was searching for a place to stay in Poland and so I came across, I needed the rest, so I came across this place here. I'm just gonna give you a glimpse an idea about what's going on. Came across this place known as the Warsaw Hostel. This place is ran by Central Intelligence Agency 100%. Okay, 
this is what that place looks like on the map. Went in here. They were very, very happy to see me when I got there. However, I already was there. And as soon as I walked in there, okay, as soon as I got in there, Let's see this here, I would say here. Okay, let's see this, let's go here. Okay, so what you see, this is exactly the place. All right, so let's see here. Here, a little more. Just trying to position myself, okay? If you're in Warsaw in Poland, don't go inside of this place here. the Warsaw Hostel, okay? Uh, look, got in there, they were very happy to see me, however, I asked them if they can show me the facility. Went in there, I knew exactly where I was. Just turned around and walked right out. I came out. There were many, many Polish people right here. At the airports, because this, uh, at the either airports or the rail stations, but when at the airports, Polish police did not play. And the same was when I traveled uh, along the Poland with a railroad. I was escorted by cloud of people that appeared to me to be Israelis have interacted and talked with people who had heavy Israeli accent. Uh, the environment when I would get to a certain place, a certain location would be like just a regular environment. You would get to see people, this and that. But with the time, gradually, you would see the environment would just change. You would just get to see completely different faces, completely different people. So this is what went on in Warsaw. Um, environment would just change. It would be all of a sudden you would find yourself in a cloud uh, of totally different people, uh, non-Polish people. Uh, things would turn around. Uh, and, uh, you know, thank you very much to Polish police. Uh, they don't play. They, they don't play. That's all I have to say. Uh, I think that thanks to them that I'm here today in Ukraine, in you know, if, if it was not for them, I would not even be here. A very sadistic, criminal, crazy people is what they are. And now you can see this is unprecedented. I mean, you are at the border crossing and you are not allowed to approach to the guard, to Belarusian guard to apply for political asylum. It's unheard. I can understand that they would not allow you to board the plane or bus or I don't know, um, let's say uh, train or whatever. Uh, if you don't have that, uh, you know, visa, whatever, but uh, that you that you literally come to the border crossing and you you're you're mistreated like this, you're told like that, and the guard was not even nice. I mean, the guard was just uh, this is just pure arrogance and you know, incredible, no? incredible. I spoke to the supervisor. He spoke to the supervisor. He did what he's supposed to do. Uh, but, uh, you know, this is, this is like going basically against, uh, uh, you know, uh, politicians, the highest politicians. And so, uh, it's a criminality at, at a higher, the highest degree one can possibly imagine. Uh, I don't know what this police car is driving around here. Definitely is not going to intimidate me with his uh, circling around here. Really, I, I don't really care about <laughs> what they do, to tell you the truth. So I'm heading back now, back now to Terraspol and from there on, I don't know where I'm going to sleep, maybe on, the, on a train station if uh, 
I'm gonna be allowed or something and we'll try to go to the bank get the money changed whatever I have left those leftovers and maybe I even make it back to Varsho uh, post on the Facebook update or something like that I got nothing else to say I mean if this is not criminal I, I don't know what it is Well, uh, I don't really have any words, don't know what uh, to say to you about this. This is how it all ends. Uh, today is April, I think April the 15th. It's about 10 minutes to 5 o'clock in the morning right now. And so, uh, it was... Uh, Probably people would say all oh, in vain for nothing, but uh, I believe that this is important because it gives uh, the platform. I gotta say one thing I would like to mention is that the driver uh, of the car, a very nice person. Um, let's see, we have his business card still here. Uh, anyhow, his name I think is Mercian. I would say Mercian, I think. Uh, he's got his cap, uh, it was very nice and he told me that there is a lot, a lot of people like myself, they try to go to Belarus and they try to file for political asylum, I really didn't know. Uh, so this is how it all ends, this is pretty much the end of this trip. So, Have some, have some folks here, uh, not gonna film them, so, This is the main train station where we are at and probably in about half an hour or so I will be out of here too. So back to Warsaw, back to I don't even know what to, I don't know what to tell you about all this other than what you were able to see. One more time. Here is the ticket. This is my ticket. Uh, let me show you. Let me show you. Let's, let me see if I can show you the. Let's see, it's 75. <clears throat> That's a seat right here. And wagon number 10. See that all right? This is the ticket. Uh, I'm going to repeat. In Paul. Poland, I was not allowed to even talk to Belarusian authorities at the border crossing. They would not even allow me to talk to them. And if this is not the prison, if this is not the jail, then I don't know what it is. And that's because I didn't have a tourist visa. Like, I didn't come to apply for political asylum, but instead to be a tourist. So. I don't know what this is supposed to mean, uh, with, uh, you know, how far these people can go, if they can go any further than this. This is beyond disgusting. Right there, there you go. Terrace ball. See that? That's 
a big ass sign from european union how good it is so that's great